So this week uh, we're going back to Star Wars. We're going to be looking at Bandai's 172nd scale A-Wing kit. And this is one I've been hoping to open up for a little while now, as I actually, in all honesty, picked this up from uh, Barnes & Noble. So they're pretty widely available, so let's dig in. Um, this is going to be a little odd ordered in terms of looking at spurs but uh first up we've got some of the effect parts that the kit comes with for the laser cannons uh it's pretty basic clear colored pr plastic um does a nice job of simulating the effect of a cans being fired so it's a nice option to have uh continue on uh we've got our uh dark sprue including parts for the cockpit the canopy side panels and parts for the laser cannons. Uh, overall molding is very nicely done. Detailing is uh, for this scale is nice. Uh, could be some a little extra detailing in some of the panel parts, especially in the. Um, and I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera. I'll try my best. I may have to try and flip this upside down. But here, like on the main instrument panel, detailing could be just a hair bit better, but I ultimately meant that's splitting hairs. Um, some of this, I think, is because they intended to use either a decal or a sticker, which I'll get to in a few minutes. Uh, next up, we've got our large uh, main white set of pieces for our body as well as the tail fins and a couple of other odds and in parts um, also included on this white piece is the landing gear uh, phase for the main gear um, this is where I think they could have done a lot better as unfortunately I think they're a little limited by fact that we never on screen really see a good shot of the landing gear bay since they're basically going off all the models that Lucasfilm provided. And all the shots we see are either of an A-Wing in flight, such as during the indoor battle sequence, or a hangar shot from pretty far distance, so you really can't make out any details. So it stands the reason on the actual models they didn't include any because they could obviously get away with it. So this is an area where I think they could have taken some artistic license and put a little detail in just to, you know, liven it up a bit. So that is something to be aware of, or obviously an area where you could probably do some scratch building. Uh, continuing on, we've got some of the engine nozzles here, which obviously you're gonna get tucked into there. Something which, in all honesty, until I looked at this kit and started looking at some photos of the actual models they used, I never honestly noticed on A-Wing that it does have these four little thruster engines included in it, since honestly your eye immediately goes to the much larger main ones. But I digress. Um, this spur also has our pilot figure, which for this scale is very nicely done. But just to my eye, for some reason, I don't know if it's just the proportions of it with the long legs. Just seems a little overscale to... I don't know, just something about it is off. Beyond that, though, the casting is very nice. The detailing is superb. Um, try to get this on camera as best I can. Fortunately, the mic's not cooperating too well today. But yeah, they did a great job on the pilot figure, so that's something that'll paint up and go nicely with this kit. As far as some of the finer details, such as you know, here on the back panel, it's very nice, clean, crisp, and within scale for the kit. Excuse me. Continuing on, we've got a little bit of a hodgepodge tree. Uh, we've got our landing gear gear bay doors, and our red parts. 
since this is a Bandai kit, they do obviously pour it as separate parts and have you basically build it as a snap kit akin to a Gundam kit, which does make this kit a little uh, newbie friendly. And at the same time, it does help break down some of the painting for more experienced modelers. Uh, also included on this sprue are, are uh, canopy frames, something which if we go over here to our clear parts, which are okay, um, could be a little thinner and better, clearer, but you're given two separate canopy frame parts, one with the frame molded on and then one without. Now, and again, this could just be my personal eye on the without frame. It seems like the place where you go to stick the frame part in is about that much too big. And once you stick it on, you're still going, going to have a bit of a gap. So given that, I would say if you're going for a closed up version, go with the molded on. If you're going to open it up, however, I would say definitely go with this version since that does give you some overlap with which to you can fudge with when you're cutting it open. Um, you're also given these clear parts for your engine nozzles, which we'll go into once we get to the assembly guide. But overall, the casting is great. Detailing on these parts as well is superb. Uh, definitely high quality. A uh, nice thing this kit does come with is a base for which to display it as well as a mounting uh, stand. Again, one of the reasons they do, I think they want you to display it that way since of the lack of detail in landing gear area. But also it comes with a turbo laser tower. Now this is where they drop the ball a little and I think they're trying to have you do it with a little bit of force perspective i.e. because the object is closer, the object further away is going to be, quote, smaller so as to give a better sense of distance and size. But in that regard, this is the turbo laser tower is out of scale for it. I would say it's probably close to 1 100th scale, which does open up some interesting possibilities since this is Bandai. You could literally have a Gundam going up against a turbo laser tower for whatever reason or other such crack ideas. But detailing on it is very nice, and same with the base part here. And the base part is, again, I would say about the same scale, so, but, mm, excuse me, same scale as the turbo laser tower, but since, again, going for the perspective approach, um, it still works. And obviously, can be easily quick coat, single coat of paint, nice pen and wash, and it'll look great. So, continuing from there, let's go over to our decal and sticker sheet. Now that is something I, I do applaud uh, Bandai for doing with a lot of these releases. And forgive me if audio is being a little wonky. Mike is not wanting to stay where I put it. Uh, you're given both a water slide decal sheet and a sticker sheet. Now obviously, Junior Modeler, it's nice to have the sticker sheet that, as an option. But going with the water slide decal sheet for most people is the way to go. Uh, given all of your various little uh, stencils as well as some of the marking pieces, honestly, probably be better to paint those. But it's nice to have them as an option. Uh, we're also given our instrument panel decal and a little heads up display piece. So overall, the register on these decals is very nice. So let's go ahead and look at how the, this thing gets built up. Now this is uh, where you can easily tell if you've built any type of Gundam kit, uh, Bandai style of assembly comes into play. Everything's snap fit and designed to be um, so that a junior modeler could basically pick it up and be able to produce a good kit. And it shows in this um, part how they have the build sequence is, you know, pretty standard cockpit, body, what have you. But how they have you put everything together is very straightforward, almost, I would say, idiot proof, I guess. 
and the assembly is not super complex. Uh, the only area I would say you might have some trouble with is back here with the nozzle exhaust nozzles, but that's mainly because they're much smaller parts, and just trying to get those together could pose a little bit of a challenge. Now <clears throat> uh, that we got our build up for landing gear in flight and how to do the stand. Everything overall, because it is a snap kit, does make life a lot easier. Uh, moving on to the painting instructions, which I'm glad they do include. Um, now there's not a whole lot to say here, but it's nice that they include everything, including the paint callouts for the uh, decal markings as well. My own complaint here would be that they only just give you a color name. They don't give you like, no, uh, Mr. Color H1 for white or what have you. Um, even though the names do apply to the Mr. Color line, it, it still would have been nice to have the actual paint number just because it does make things a little easier. Now, um, one thing I do need to mention is because, uh, I guess, because of licensing issues with regards to since Disney bought um, Lucasfilm, getting the Bandai kits it has been, in the last couple of years, a little harder because, I guess, exclusivity as far as import or something that regard. If someone knows more on that, please do shoot a comment. I'd really appreciate a little bit better understanding the whole situation. But fortunately, these kits are now finally available in the U.S. So this is one, if you're a fan of swords, I highly, highly recommend picking up. Um, we'll, we'll be looking at other Bandai Star Wars kits, but this one is definitely a good one to start with, I would say. Um, it, I, I, as I said, I picked this up from a Barnes & Noble with coupon. It, it was, no, about 25 bucks, so you get it a lot for your money. And you know what? It does provide you a great platform with which to do a lot of, you know, what if designs and what have you. So overall, great kit. I highly recommend it. Um, so that was a look at Bandai's uh, 172nd scale A-Wing. Uh, definitely one to, if you find it, grab it. Uh, you will not be disappointed. Until next time.